The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Fortenza Vibrance Max Plus Saltro. Hello, I'm Lara Demozak. Welcome to another Soybean School episode here on realagriculture.com. In this episode, I speak with John Hurd, Soil Fertility Specialist at Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development, about how high soil nitrate levels in a preceding year can affect a soybean crop in the future. Here's John. Okay, th- th- this is good, but we need to look at uh, two time frames for this. Uh, we were always very concerned about high nitrate levels when we were in the introductory phase of soybeans. When you're going on with virgin soybeans and the only rhizobium it's going to get is that that you've applied with the uh, inoculant. Mm-hmm. And in those years, we saw nodulation failures when that seemed to be connected to high nitrate levels in the soil. And uh, so uh, we developed some thumb rules to try to direct people away from challenging the soybeans like that and and say, you know, maybe put something else there. Even at that time, people were telling us sometimes they got away with it. And we've revisited that with some field observations and studies. And now, since then, 15 years later, we've grown maybe five crops of soybeans successfully on that land. And I think it's much less risky now uh, because we've got uh, uh, that buffer. We've got some rhizobium built up in the soil. Right. So, and just to kind of clarify this, we're talking excess nitrate rates, or sorry, excess nitrates that could actually inhibit nodulation in a soybean crop, which yeah. which is bad for later in the season. Yeah, uh, Laura, some of these numbers we're hearing are, are unreal. Uh, in parts of the Red River Valley, we would typically have 20, 30 pounds residual in where there are failed uh, wheat or canola crops, we're getting 110, 140, up to 200 pounds residual in, which are unheard of. So uh, this this is really throwing people a, a bit of a tizzy in regards to, can I continue a rotation with soybeans? So it's a legitimate concern, uh, but I, I think that uh, knowing some of our situation, it, people will still may be able to pick and choose uh, good fields. All right. So... Um- Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if there, if there are nitrate levels in excess of, say, around seventy or eighty pounds of nitrate, the soybean crop won't even initiate nodulation. And so, later in the season, if all of say we get a we get a good growing year and the soybean crop has used up all that all that nitrate, but they haven't initiated nodulation you may have to go in with a, a rescue nitrogen application. Yeah, 15 years ago, we were working hard on that. We, we had inoculation failures back then, and that was one of our uh, to-do things, was develop uh, rescue plans and things like that. But it also caused us to uh, do some, you know, some people just want to put nitrogen on soybeans. So we did a bunch of field studies where we put nitrogen on. Essentially, we caused high nitrate in the soil. We do knock the the nodule numbers for loop when we do that. On virgin fields, we took low numbers of nodules down to zero nodules per plant. On fields where we had established several, two, three, four successful crops of soybeans down there, we took nodule numbers from like 40 per plant down to 20 per plant. Still a reduction, but uh, good work done here by the Soybean and Pulse Growers Association is showing that providing we get 10 nodules per plant, we're good to go. So where we have established rhizobium in the past, uh, we still feel, you know, we still feel that there's some good confidence going forward. Uh, in those fields. Do high nitrates pose a risk for disease development in soybeans? Well, we have a syndrome for that. (laughs) We call it uh, iron deficiency chlorosis. And uh, yes, that was something we heard from the Americans early 
And in some of our studies where we were developing our rescue plan, we found that if we put nitrogen on the soybeans too early, that high nitrate level causes iron deficiency chlorosis. It's a risk factor the same way as uh, uh, calcium carbonate or free lime in the soil is a risk factor and salinity is a risk factor. High nitrate levels are also a risk factor. And for that, we would suggest just with variety selection, make sure you choose those varieties with the best tolerance. What else would you recommend to farmers for 2022 with their soybean, I, soybean plants? Well, I, would, I would say find somewhere else to put the darn things. <laughs> Urea right now costs 90 cents per pound of nitrogen. If I have carryover of 110, 140 or more pounds of nitrogen, that is an awful lot of fertilizer dollar to waste on a soybean crop. So I'm hoping that uh, within the rotation, growers can find fields or crops that will exploit that. Uh, wheat, canola, corn, crops that will exploit that. And so we can uh, uh, reduce some of the fertilizer bill for those crops. And I'm hoping that through soil testing, they find that there are some fields that are more appropriate for their soybeans. Really good advice. Uh, one other thing that, that preempts all this notion about high nitrates is, is a, the real concern over herbicide carryover. It's dry. We tend to have high pH levels in much of Manitoba. And that's something that's top of mind for growers is that that also is something that's going to really dictate rotations for us this year. So uh, they need to uh, pay close attention to that. Absolutely. Thanks for your, for your time today, John. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good day.